Have you ever believed someone even for 30 years and suddenly found out that he lied? And not just to others, but to you, his friend. And not just you, to his own brother and wife. It's devastating. It's astonishing. This is what I found out just yesterday about Konstantin Tischendorf, the guy who gave us the Sinaiticus, supposedly the oldest Bible in the world, the one they used to justify so many changes in modern Bibles. Want to learn what I just found out? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. I got these books in the last few days. Uh, the one translated in 2013 and the other just came out this year, I got a digital copy. They are pro Tischendorf, no doubt about it. But between them, they are showing me that what Tischendorf claimed about how he got the Sinaiticus that I even passed on in my book couldn't possibly have happened. In a book that he wrote three years before he died, he told about how he found the Sinaiticus manuscript. He was in a monastery library in the Sinai Desert, surrounded by shelves of printed and handwritten books. He said, I looked through them one by one. In the middle of the library, however, there was also a large basket containing the remains of damaged manuscripts. When I proceeded to examine this, Kirillos, the librarian, remarked that its contents had twice been thrown into the fire. This, therefore, was the third filling, which to all appearances was destined for the same end. I could not fail to be astonished when I removed a number of very large parchment sheets of Greek script whose paleographic appearance led me to conclude that they are of the greatest antiquity. Paleographic means ancient writing. A paleographer is someone who deciphers and transcribes ancient writing. A bit later, he wrote, The basket's destiny rendered it possible for the smaller, loose batch of leaves, 43 of them, to be surrendered to me at my request. So, there are four main points I want you to note from Tischendorf's own hand in his own book, 1871. One, there was a large basket with remains of damaged manuscripts. Two, Carillos the librarian told him that the last two basketfuls were thrown into the fire. Three, this basket full was the third filling, put there to be burnt. Four, he got to take 43 leaves, later called the Codex Frederico Augustanus, CFA, because they were just going to be thrown into the fire. What if I told you that all four of these points were bold-faced lies? Let me make it simple. On the very next page, the author explains, one, that large basket wasn't a waste paper basket. For centuries, as Tischendorf knew, those baskets were the way you store parchment all over Europe and the East. Two, monks did not throw parchment into the fire. Parchment is nothing but thinly scraped animal hide, which burns badly, and it would stink up the place. Besides, parchment was valuable. Papyrus can get old and fall apart. Parchment is, according to this author, almost imperishable. They didn't destroy it, they reused it. You know how? They scraped or washed off the old words and wrote on new words. Then it was called a palimpsest. And Tischendorf knew this as well. 
Tischendorf, it turns out, became famous among paleographers when he deciphered a Bible palimpsest called Ephraimi Rescriptus. Three, so this couldn't have been the third villain waiting to be burned at all. Four, so he didn't get those 43 snow white leaves, the CFA, because it was just going to be burned. But that leads us to a fifth lie. Tischendorf lied about what Carillus the librarian said. He couldn't have said that they were burning parchment. He couldn't have said two other basketfuls of parchment were burned. He couldn't have given Snow White CFA to Tischendorf to save it from the fire. But that's not all I just found out. Just last night, reading this book, I found out that Tischendorf wrote letters with parts of this story to his older brother, to others, and to his future wife. What kind of man would lie to everyone he knew? Look, I thought Tischendorf made some pretty big mistakes, but I never thought the story of how he got Sinaiticus was a lie. And if that's a lie, what else is? Do you know what depends upon Sinaiticus? Matthew 5.22, taking the without a cause, making Jesus a sinner for being angry at the money changers. What tipped the balance for removing those words? The Sinaiticus. John 7 verse 8, Changing, I go not up yet to this feast, to I go not up to this feast. Changing not yet to not, making Jesus a liar to his brothers. Even the Vaticanus got that one right. But the Sinaiticus is the reason that it was changed in 22 modern Bibles. Making Jesus a sinner and Jesus a liar from the Codex Sinaiticus. This find of the century, as they called the Sinaiticus, overnight changed Tischendorf into a superstar. Scholar Philip Schaff, in his 1883 Companion to the Greek New Testament, he talked about Tischendorf's, quote, personal vanity and over-fondness for his many and well-earned titles, covering ten lines on the title pages of some of his books, and 20 or more decorations from sovereigns which were displayed in his parlor, end quote. That included, by the way, honorary doctorates from Oxford and Cambridge and a commendation from the Pope. None of that fame and fortune could be the motivation for lying for 30 years to everyone who knew about the origin of the Sinaiticus. Could it? I found this out from his other new biography. In 1866, four years after he published Sinaiticus, he said these words, quote, But we have at last hit upon a better plan than this, which is to set aside this Textus Receptus altogether and to construct a fresh text derived immediately from the most ancient and authoritative sources. Who's we? And did he really mean to set aside the preserved Bible? The Bible of the persecuted believers? The King James Bible and his own Lutheran church? Yes, he did. Brothers and sisters, this is no small thing. Remember, Every Bible you see behind me and their Bible doubting footnotes, including in the King James's, and every Bible translated by Wycliffe Bible Translators and SIL and the United Bible Societies in every language around the world is largely based on the changed text in Sinaiticus. Seriously. Count the cost. I already have, 
and I have never regretted a second of it. God bless you and have a wonderful day.